uh, blood-bought uh, children of his, and uh, you know that 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 uh, relationship never changes. That relationship never changes. I'll never lose my salvation. You'll never lose your salvation, amen. But uh, but the fellowship can. The fellowship can. And so when God was working me over with the fellowship, it, it had nothing to do with sin in my life necessarily. Because I know that when sin comes in your life, then there can be things that, that can wane the fellowship. It can destroy that fellowship, right? Because God cannot have any part of sin. And uh, so it can, it can put something between you and God. But it, the, when God was working it over in my life, it wasn't necessarily sin in my life that blocked that fellowship there uh, of communion with Him. It was the fact that there was a lot of times that I, that I downgraded, if you would, the fellowship that I had. And what the fellowship, the, the cost that, 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 God, that, that God paid and the, the price that, that the Lord Jesus Christ paid in order for me to have this fellowship to where I can commune with Him on a daily basis. And not only that, but when things come into my life that break this fellowship, and we're going to deal with this a little bit here in 1 John, the Lord Jesus Christ has provided a way and God has provided a way so those things can be taken care of so that fellowship can continue on a daily basis. And so there's, there's no reason, there's no excuse in our life not to have fellowship with the Lord Jesus. If you're a blood-bought saint of God, there's nothing that would inhibit you because of what the Lord Jesus does, has, Christ has done on the cross of Calvary. There's nothing that can inhibit you from that. And so we're going to look at a few things tonight out of 1 John. So if you got your Bibles, we're going to go to 1 John. We're going to, we're going to read here chapter number 1. We'll start at verse number 1. It says, That which was uh, from the beginning which we have heard, which we have seen with our own eyes, which, are, which we have looked upon, our hands have handled, of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you eternal life, that was with the Father, which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. And these wow. things write, write, write me unto you, that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we have heard of Him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in Him is no darkness at all. Let's pray. Father, we're thankful again, Lord, just to be in your house tonight. Lord, we just thank you. That we can come and gather around the Word of God tonight. Lord, uh, Lord, I mention this every time. But thank you, Father, for your long sufferingness and the fact that, uh, Lord, that we can now, uh, tonight, again, we have the opportunity, Lord, to open the Word of God, the very breath of God, the preserved Word of God. We can open that tonight, Lord, and we can read it, God, and we can, we can, uh, we can teach it, we can preach it, we can practice it, Lord, we can walk in it, God. We're just so thankful for these things tonight. You've given us another opportunity tonight, Lord, to do these things. I pray that we not take it for granted, Lord. I pray that there'd never be an excuse in our life that, that would keep us away from, from opening the Word of God and spending time with you in fellowship, Lord. I thank you for what you've done for us that we can even, just even to be able to approach you, Father. And so we're so thankful for that tonight. In your name we pray. Amen. So, uh, John, the beloved, is the one who uh, wrote our pen, I would say, the, uh, the epistle here of, of John, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John. And uh, the Lord Jesus, I mean, uh, God used John to pen what is called the Gospel of John as well as the book of Revelation. And so, uh, and, uh, so it, is, uh, it is commonly believed that at the time of this writing that uh, John was the only surviving apostle that was left. Those that had walked with God, those who had seen God. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, this was right before, obviously, right before he, had, he would be banished uh, to the Isle there of Patmos and to pen the book of Revelation as well. He'd be boiled and, and banished there. <clears throat> and so you, it's, it's interesting how that, how that God will use things, and I know you can testify this in your own life, how that God will use His Word to encourage you and to lift you up and build you up right before you go into something like a trial or a temp right. testing or a temptation. God will give you exactly what you need through His Word and through the preaching and teaching of God's Word for that time that you're going, going to go through that only He knows about. And so here is John writing about fellowship 
and talking about fellowship, and he uses the word we and us and all of these things a lot. But you have to understand that at this time, he didn't have those men that he walked on earth with when they went, the other, the other 11 that he worked with, the Lord Jesus, and the Lord Jesus spent time training them and discipling them and teaching them all of these things. Those, all, those men were gone. And so here is John getting ready to go into a place where he'd be alone, he'd be boiled with oil and then sent out there, you know, and uh, to pen the book of Revelation. And so he, he's going to be by himself. But I want you to understand that, that John is saying here that that fellowship can still be had. Yes. And we need to understand that in our life that, you know, even though we, as we even mentioned tonight, we're going to have hard times in life. Well, we all know that. We've all experienced hard times in life. But we understand that, that, that God promised that. He said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And the fellowship that we have, obviously, is number one is through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You have to be a you have to be a child of God before you can have fellowship with God. Right. And so we're thankful tonight that we can have this fellowship. But I want you to understand also that fellowship takes work. Fellowship takes work. You know, my wife and I, we can have fellowship together, but we have to work at that fellowship. It doesn't just it doesn't just happen just naturally. I mean, you know, when when, when you start uh, courting or, or whatever you do before you get married, you know, you're all starry-eyed and nothing else bothers you. I mean, you just look at one another and, and uh, you don't notice anything else that's going on around you except for what's going on between one another. But you know, there's a time that, that, that I'm just going to be honest with you, and I don't mean this in a bad way. She said the same thing, but that doesn't last for, forever. I mean, it, it, it stays good. Don't get me wrong. But there's times where there, you know, where there's a, where there's some fighting that goes on between you and your spouse, and so there's you have to work. Yes, Amen. You have to work at this relationship. You have to work at this fellowship. You know, we know that fellowship comes only through the blood of Christ, but you have to work at these things, and you have to spend time with God. I, it's going to surprise you, but the more that I spend time with my wife, the more I know about it. The more that my wife spends time with me, the more she knows about me. I mean, if we had gotten married, we've been married now for 23 years, praise the Lord. And if we had gotten married and then spent every day apart from one another, there would be nothing there. There would be no time. She, I wouldn't know anything about her. She wouldn't know anything about me. Yes, we would be married. Yes, there would be that marital relationship there. But I'd know nothing about her. And so we want to understand tonight, and this is what John is, through the Holy Spirit, through the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, he's pinning here, and God wants us to know, through the writer John the Beloved, what is this fellowship, and what it encompasses. And well, obviously, we, we've only got a few moments tonight, where I mean, we could spend years and years and years on this subject alone. But I just want to pull out a few things that God really worked me over in my life about in my relationship and fellowship with the Lord Jesus and in my walk with Him. And so I want you to see number one here uh, in this book. Number one, uh, I want you to see the source of this fellowship. The source of this fellowship. John says here in verse number three, he says, That which was seen, I'm sorry, that which we have seen and, and heard declare in you that ye also may have fellowship with us and truly look and truly our fellowship is with the father and with his son jesus christ so i want you to go to i want you to go to uh um, to book of genesis we're going to go back to the beginning of the bible book of genesis chapter number one we're looking now at the source of this fellowship the source of this fellowship is god the father it was initiated by God the Father. It was from the beginning. I know that John here is talking about the word of life here being from the beginning, and that is Jesus Christ. But I want you to understand that this fellowship here, it started with God the Father. And Jesus Christ is God. So I'm not taking anything out of context at all. The source of this fellowship is Jesus Christ. Right. Look, me as sinful man, I can have, I can want to have fellowship all day long with a thrice holy God, but without the Lord Jesus Christ and without God wanting that fellowship, I can't have any part of that. Why? Right. It's initiated by Him. Right. By God. So the source of the fellowship that we have 
through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, we need not to take that just by some whim because it's initiated by God. God wants to have fellowship with you. Imagine that now. Take that in for a moment. God wants to have fellowship with you, and He sent His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for that reason. So we're going to look here at John, uh, Genesis chapter number 1. We see here in verse number 26, it says, And God said, Let us make man in our image, and after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. So we see that we're created in, our, in his image. And then we go over to verse, or chapter number 3 here. And we know it happens in chapter number 3. This is where the serpent comes in. And he beguiles Eve. And, and uh, she eats and gives to Adam also. And he eats. And then they fall. Okay, So here's where sin enters in. Verse number 7 is where we'll start in chapter number 3. And it says, And the eyes of them both were opened. And they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. So they knew because of that sin that, that, that they can have no part now of God because God is holy. And that they had disobeyed God. And so now they're hiding themselves here. And verse number 9, it says, And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? So the question to us tonight is, where are we in our fellowship with God? Where are we? Is your fellowship just as sweet as it was the first day that you got saved? Is it better than that now? Is it less than that now? Where are we in our fellowship with God? God wants to fellowship with you. God has made it possible that there can even be fellowship. Where are we at in our fellowship? God was looking for Adam and Eve. Where art thou? He was wanting to fellowship with them. So where are we at tonight? So we see in the source, let's flip back now to uh, John chapter, or 1 John chapter number 1. We see in the source that it was initiated, number one, by the Father, because it says that which was from the beginning there. In John chapter number one, and verse number one, it says that which was from the beginning. And we also not only see that it was initiated by God, but I want you to understand that it was illustrated by His Son. It was illustrated by His Son. The source of this fellowship was illustrated by His Son. John goes on, he says, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, which our hands have handled, the word of life. John was saying the very word of life, the one that was in the beginning, in the beginning was God, and the word was with God, and the word was God, the same was in the beginning with God. That same, that same word of life was illustrated by the Son in the fact that it's the source of our fellowship when He walked among men. He walked among men. John chapter number 1. And uh, we'll look here. Uh, flip over to John chapter number 1. <clears throat> and we're going to look here in verse number 14. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory... The glory is the only God of the Father, full of grace and truth. So here, John is, is John the Baptist is going to preach about the light, talking about the Lord Jesus Christ, and how that, that light would be manifested among men. And how that and John the Beloved is writing here, and he's saying that word that he was talking about there, the same one that was in the beginning, that word there, it was man, it was made flesh and it dwelt among us. We understand the gravity, the source of this fellowship. The very word of God was made flesh and dwelt among us. And the Bible says, when we beheld his glory.
the glory is the only God of the Father. Full of grace and truth. That's the mercy and grace of God. The sending His Son as man. To be born of a virgin. Sinless. And love among men. And John, the beloved, writes over here in 1 John about the source of this fellowship. He says, he just didn't, he just didn't come, and we'll, he, it just, it's just not that he was amongst us. He says, and we heard him. Right. This is God that John is talking about. We heard him. We saw him with our own eyes. We came to source of our fellowship that we can enjoy tonight through the Lord Jesus Christ it comes from God. It's initiated by God and it's illustrated by His Son. 1 Timothy, we'll flip over to 1 Timothy here. 1 Timothy chapter number 3 and verse number 16 and it says in verse 15 it says Paul obviously is writing here to Timothy and teaching him some things about about how to behave himself in the house of God and things of that nature. And he's writing here, he says, But if I tarry long that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, and the pillar and ground of truth. And he goes on here, and you know, many times we, we separate this verse because he says, And, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. Here he goes. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up in the glory. Right. So we see that this fellowship was initiated by God, by the Father, and it was illustrated by the Son. But I want you to see also that it was imparted unto you. It was imparted unto you. So if you go back to 1 John here, chapter number 1, it was imparted unto you because he says here in verse number 2, he says, for the life was manifested. It was made known. Like, here, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to manifest my Bible. Okay, here we go. Ready? I'm going to manifest it. There you go. Right. You see it? Okay. Ready? Once again, in case we missed out, I'm going to manifest my Bible. Boom. Right. God was manifested. He said, the Lord Jesus Christ, the life, this life, the word of life, the very word of God, God himself in flesh, this life was manifested and we have seen it and bear witness and shown you the eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. So not only is it initiated by the Father and illustrated by the Son, but it's imparted unto you. And this is all in the source of our fellowship. Number two, I want you to see the strength of this fellowship. Number two, the strength of this fellowship. <clears throat> so this sort, the source, again, the source of this fellowship is written in God's Word. The strength of this fellowship is also written in His Word. So we can understand here what we're talking about. Verse number four, he says, And these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. I'm praising God tonight that not only do I have fellowship with God the Father through the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm praising the Lord that it's been written down and that I can go to it in time of need whenever, every day, every moment of the day, and I can learn more about God and I can learn more about the Lord Jesus Christ and I can learn more about myself and I can have fellowship with Him Amen. in those things. So with the strength of this fellowship is written in His Word. I want you to understand that because it's written in His Word, there is a certainty of this, of this writing. He says, these things. What's He talking about when He says these things? He's talking about the truth of God's Word. The truth of the Scriptures. That is the certainty of God's Word. John 17, 17 says, sanctify them through thy, thy, thy truth. Thy Word is truth. Psalm 119, verse number 160, 60, it says, Thy word is true from the beginning, and every one of thy righteous judgments endureth forever. So we see the certainty of God's word is because of the truth of God's word. There's right. nothing else in life that's more certain than God's word. When God's word says, It is appointed unto man once to die, and after this the judgment, you can mark it down, that's exactly what's going to happen. Yes, sir. When the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present from the Lord, you can mark it down. That's exactly how it happens. There are many that will try and tell you opposite of that, but that's not the truth. This is truth. 
Right. So we see the strength of this fellowship. It's found in the certainty, the truth of God's word. Not only is it found in the certainty of God's word, but it's also found in the credibility of God's word. Because he writes it. He says, write me unto you. Write me unto you. So he's wanting you to understand. The tr and not only is these things, not only the truth of this written down, but it's written unto you. And he wants you to know that, that this fellowship, the strength of this fellowship, because it's written in God's word, it is not only truth, but it's trustworthy. Right. You know, there's times in our life when we'll believe something, but we won't trust in it. Ah. There's times in our life when we'll recognize that as truth, but we won't do it. Right. We need to understand tonight that this word of God is not only truth, but it's trustworthy. Yes. It is trustworthy. And that, that talks about the credibility of what's being talked about here. 2 Timothy 3.16. We're all familiar with this verse. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Doctrine there is what's right. Amen. Reproof is what's not right. Correction is how to get it right. And instruction is now how to stay right. So everything we need to know about every, about life and godliness is found right here in God's Word. And not only is it truth, but it is trustworthy. When the Bible says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. It's not only true, but it's trustworthy. Kids, you can live that in your life, and God will bless you. It is trustworthy. So this fellowship, we understand the source of it. We see the strength of it here. We've seen the certainty of it. We see the credibility of it. But also I want you to see, he's talking about here the completeness of this fellowship, the completeness of this strength. It's only found, in the, uh, it's only found through the Lord Jesus Christ, and it's written here in the Word of God. He says that your joy may be full. You know, I'm thankful tonight that when the Bible says that salvation is the gift of God, I'm thankful tonight that it is talking about the completeness of salvation. When God, when the Lord Jesus Christ said, it is finished, I'm thankful tonight that he, it was finished and it is finished. I'm thankful tonight that I don't have to go and work for my salvation. I'm thankful tonight that I don't have to, I don't have to earn my salvation. Right. I'm thankful tonight that it is, it, is, uh, it, is, it is complete in the Lord Jesus Christ and not in me. Right. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy hath He saved us. <laughs> I'm thankful tonight not only for that, but when the Bible says, shall be saved, yeah. it doesn't mean maybe. It doesn't mean might. It means complete. Right. When it's talking about redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sin, I'm thankful tonight that it doesn't mean only some sin. I'm thankful tonight that it doesn't mean only the little sins. I'm thankful tonight, Brother Hitler, that it doesn't just mean the little sins, but it means the big sin. It means all sins. There is no little sin and big sin, by the way. It's all sin. Right. If we've broken the law in one part, we've broken it all. Right. Sin is sin. <laughs> And I'm thankful tonight for the completeness in the strength of this fellowship through the Word of God that your joy may be full. So we see the totality He's trying to get across here. Not only the truth of this, the strength, not only the trustworthiness of this, but also the totality of it when He says here that your joy may be full. Oh, yes. You know, your joy will never be full outside of the Lord Jesus Christ. Absolutely. Paul, the Apostle, when he wrote Philippians, we know that he was in prison or in jail at that time writing. And one of the main things he was writing about was what? Joy. The joy of the Lord. Yeah. How do you think that happened? It's through the fellowship of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. He would not have had that outside of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. Joy doesn't come from your surroundings. Happiness might come from your surroundings. But joy doesn't. Joy only comes from the Lord. And it is complete and full. And it can be had and continue to have every day. You can come to the Lord. Lord, I need help. Lord, I need help. 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 And he's there to help. I'm thankful tonight that when he says, if any man that needs wisdom, let him ask. God giveth liberally, liberally and abradeth not is what he says. That, that abrading not means you come and ask, and he says, okay, here you go, here's wisdom. And then you come back and ask, and he goes, oh, okay, here's wisdom. And then you come and ask again, and he goes, I gave you wisdom, and two other times, no, get out of here. That's a Brady. 
And he says, the brain of God. 